friends, Miss Cassie here with Soul in Public Library's Digital Story Time. This month we're going to be talking about where we live. We'll be talking about our homes and our neighborhoods and even our country. But first, we need to sing our welcome song and we need to get our clapping hands ready. So we're going to wiggle our fingers and shake our hands and rub them together really fast, really fast, really fast and put them on our knees. Okay, here we go. If you wanna read a book, clap your hands. If you wanna read a book, clap your hands. If you wanna read a book, have a seat and take a look. If you wanna read a book, clap your hands. All right, what do we do after we clap our hands? That's right, we stomp our feet. If you want to read a book, stomp your feet. If you want to read a book, stomp your feet. If you want to read a book, have a seat and take a look. If you want to read a book, stomp your feet. Okay, what do we do after we stomp our feet? That's right, we twirl around. If you want to read a book, twirl around. If you want to read a book, twirl around. If you want to read a book, have a seat and take a look. If you want to read a book, twirl around. Okay, for our last verse, we're going to be as quiet as we can. And we're going to whisper, hooray. If you want to read a book, whisper, hooray. song this month is going to be part of the song The More We Get Together by Raffi. And we are going to learn some American Sign Language signs while we sing this song. So we're just going to learn three signs for the song. The first sign is together. You're going to take both hands and it's going to be kind of like you are piling up a pile of snow. Together. <laughs> together. Good job. And then the next one is happy. And you take your hand, you put your fingers together, and you're, it's kind of like um, when you have, uh, when your heart is really happy, but we're gonna um, waft up like this. Happy, good job. And then friend. And we're gonna take our two pointer fingers, these are our two friends, and they're gonna give each other a hug, like this, and then the other way. Friend. There you go. So we have together, happy, and friend. Okay, are you ready for our song? Here we go. The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. Because your friend is my friend, and my friend is your friend. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. Good job, friends. We're going to do it one more time. The more we get together, 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 the more we get together, the happier we'll be. Because your friends are my friends, and my friends are your friends. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. Yay! Good job! Our first book today is called Home, and it's written and illustrated by Carson Ellis. Now, we are going to see a lot of different kinds of homes in these, this book. Some of them are real homes, and some of them are homes from the past. Some of them are imaginary homes. Some of them are homes from storybooks. So let's see all the different kinds of homes. Home is a house built in the country. Or home is an apartment. 
This apartment looks like it's in a big city, but there are apartments in all kinds of different cities. We have apartments here in Solon even. Some homes are boats. That's a big boat. Some homes are wigwams. People don't really live in wigwams anymore, but some people used to. Some are palaces or underground lairs, or shoes. This looks like it's a home from a storybook, maybe a nursery rhyme. There was an old lady who lived in a shoe. French people live in French homes. Atlantean, Atlanteans make their homes underwater. Do you know about the lost world of Atlantis, lost city of Atlantis? Yeah, it's underwater. And some folks live on the road. This looks like it's musicians in a tour bus. There are clean homes and messy homes. Sometimes homes can be both, right? Sometimes they're messy and sometimes they're clean. I know that's what my home is. Tall homes and short homes. Sea homes? Who do you think lives in the sea home? We've got a fish, and it looks like there are some knights riding seahorses. That looks like an imaginary home to me. Bee homes and hollow tree homes. But whose home is this? What do you think? Who would live in a tiny rock house on the top of a mountain. Maybe an explorer, or maybe a hermit, or maybe a monk, or I don't know. What about this home? It's got a teacup turned around behind it, so I bet it's a very tiny home. Oh, and there's a snail and a, and a mushroom next to it. I bet a very tiny person lives in this home. Maybe a fairy, or maybe tiny bugs live in this home. Who in the world lives here and why? This home looks like it's in outer space, doesn't it? It's got the glass dome on top of it, maybe to keep all the oxygen in so that the people can breathe. What planet do you think this home is on? Maybe Mars? I don't know. This is the home of a Slovakian duchess. I like the red roof. And this is the home of a Kenyan blacksmith. Do you see what's on the tree behind the Kenyan blacksmith's house? Do you see those little gourd shapes? What do you think those are? Maybe homes for birds? It looks like at least one of them is, doesn't it? This is the home of a Japanese businessman. That's a cool shape. And this is the home of a Norse god. I like all those colors and shapes on his house. A babushka lives here. Do you know what a babushka is? It's a Russian grandma. And a moonian lives here. What's a moonian? Maybe someone who lives on the moon? Maybe. A raccoon lives here. And an artist lives here. Hmm, an artist. Can you look at the things in the artist's room? Do any of those things look familiar? Like maybe the shoe or the underwater house? I think there's lots of clues in the artist's studio that maybe gave her some ideas for all those different kinds of houses. This is my home, and this is me. Where is your home? Where are you? Do you know where you are? Do you know where you live? 
If you are one of my friends who usually comes to our Solon story time, you probably live in Solon, but maybe you live in Mount Vernon or North Liberty or Iowa City or Coralville. If you are a friend watching from far away, you could maybe live anywhere in the world. If you're watching with a grown-up or with a brother or sister or a friend, can you turn to them and tell them where you live? I have some other places that animals live here on my flannel board. We have a red barn. We have a tree with a hole in the trunk. I have a yellow beehive. We've got a brown cave, a blue lake, and a brown nest. Now I have some animals that I'm holding in my hand. Can you help me put these animals in their own homes? Wonderful. Okay, here we go. Here is our first animal. What is this animal called? That's right, it's a cow. What sound does a cow make? Moo. Good job. Where does this cow live? Do you think this cow lives in the lake? No. Do you think this cow lives in the beehive? No, it's too big. Do you think this cow lives in the red barn? Yes, that's right. This cow lives in the red barn. Good job. All right, what about this animal? That's right, this is a fish. What color is this fish? That's right, it's orange. Let's see, where do we think this fish lives? Does this fish live in the cave? No. Does this fish live in the nest? No. Does this fish live in the lake? It does, good job. Fish need water to breathe, just like humans need air to breathe. So this fish definitely needs to live in the water in the lake. Okay, let's see. What animal is this? That's right, it is a bird. What color is this bird? That's right, it's yellow. Let's see, where do we think this yellow bird lives? Does this yellow bird live in the beehive? No, they're both yellow, but they don't go together. Does this bird live in the cave? No, it doesn't live in the cave. Does this bird live in the bird's nest? It does, that's right. This bird probably lives in this bird nest, maybe with some eggs, or maybe with another bird, or maybe with some hatched baby birds. And that's where they all live together and eat worms and insects and yummy things. Okay, we have three more animals. Let's see. Where does this animal live? What is this animal? That's right, it's a bear. Can you growl like a bear? Yeah. <laughs> what color is this bear? That's right, it's a brown bear. You can see bears that are black bears or white bears that are called polar bears or this kind of bear that's a brown bear. Let's find this brown bear's house. Does this brown bear live in a tree? No. They can climb trees, I'm pretty sure, but he doesn't live in a tree. What about in the beehive? No, too big. What about in the cave? That's right, especially when it's time to hibernate during the winter, which is going to be coming up soon. Bears sleep in caves, 
and they sleep all winter until it's spring again. Okay, we have two more animals. What animal is this? That's right, it's a bee. What sound does a bee make? Bzz, 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 bzz. That's right. Let's see, does this bee live in the hollow of a tree? No, it doesn't. Does this bee live in the beehive? The name kind of gives it away, doesn't it? It does, it lives in the beehive with many other bees, including a queen bee. And they make honey and they also fly out of the beehive to pollinate all of the flowers. That's how we get more flowers is the bees help pollinate them to make more flowers. Isn't that cool? All right, we have one more animal. Are you ready? What animal is this? That's right, it's an owl. What sound does an owl make? Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's right. Let's see, we have one home left. Do you think that our owl lives here in the hollow of that tree? Yes, you would be right. So we have all of our animals in their homes. We have the cow in the barn, the owl in the tree, the bee in the beehive, the bear in the cave, the fish in the lake, and the bird in the nest. Thank you for helping me help our animal friends find their homes. Great job. We're gonna do a finger rhyme called Five Little Houses. So I need you to show me your five fingers. One, two, three, four, five. And these fingers are going to become our little houses. So first we start with just one little house. One little house all alone it stood. Then another was built. There grows the neighborhood. How many houses do we have now? One, two, that's right. Two little houses together they stood. Then another was built, there grows the neighborhood. How many houses do we have now? One, two, three. Three little houses together they stood. Another was built, there grows the neighborhood. How many houses do we have now? One, two, three, four. Four little houses together they stood. Another was built, there grows the neighborhood. How many houses do we have now? One, two, three, four, five. Five houses. Five little houses together they stood on a beautiful street in a happy neighborhood. Yay, good job. Our last book today is called The Blue House, and it's written and illustrated by Phoebe Wall. Now this book is about a house, and it's also about a neighborhood, and it's about how sometimes things change. And sometimes that can be hard, but sometimes it can be good too. Leo lived with his dad in an old blue house next to a tall fir tree. Look, there's their little blue house. The paint was peeling and the roof was mossy. There were leaks and creaks and when the wind blew, the whole thing shook, but it was theirs. Oh, I like that shower curtain with all the fish on it. Leo loved the blue house in the winter with its hiding places and cozy spaces. When the old heater broke, they would just bake a pie to warm up the kitchen. Ooh, pies are yummy. What is your favorite kind of pie? I think mine is apple pie. Mmm, so yummy. They would also dance. Have you ever danced when you're cold to keep warm? It can help. 
Leo also loved the blue house in summer with its garden full of raspberries and tomatoes. Ooh, yum. Have you ever plucked a tomato from the tomato plant and eaten it right in the garden when it's nice and warm from the sun? Oh, so yummy. He would play in the yard until the sun went down. Look, what's his dad doing in this picture? Do you know? He's hanging up their laundry to dry. Did you know that's a thing you can do? You can put your clothes from the washer into the dryer. That's what a lot of people do. But you can also put a clothesline out in your yard. And when the weather is nice, especially when it's sunny, you can use clothespins and hang up your clothes and your blankets to dry outside. That's what people did before there were washers and dryers. And some people still do it. Lately, there was all kinds of construction going on in the neighborhood. Big new apartments were going up next door and across the road. Leo would wash the backhoes and trucks out of their window. They looked like tiny toys. Have you seen construction before? Yeah, there's some going on on Main Street here in Solon right now. And guess what they're building? Apartment buildings. That's right, just like in the book. I'm worried ours will be next, he heard his dad say on the phone one night. But Leo knew his dad was wrong. The blue house would be theirs forever. Because they're building apartment buildings, but were those spaces empty? They weren't. There were other houses there before that got knocked down so that they could build new buildings. So it sounds like Leo's dad is worried that they are, going, they are going to want to make their house into an apartment building, which would mean they would have to knock it down. One day, Leo's dad picked him up from school, but instead of going home, they got ice cream and went to the beach. I got a letter from our landlord today, Leo's dad said. They've sold our house and it's going to be torn down. I'm sorry, bud. We're going to have to move. So was his dad right to be worried? He was. Because their landlord, who they rent their house from, sold the house to the developers, and they are going to knock it down and make apartment buildings. So if they knock down Leo and his dad's house, can they live there anymore? They can't, because it's not going to be there. So they're going to have to find a new house. Leo was angry. Can you show me your angry faces? Yeah, good angry faces. How could someone just take their house away? He kicked and screamed and locked himself in his room. They couldn't tear it down if he never came out. Have you ever been so mad about something like that before that you wanted to, or maybe you did, kick and scream and yell and oh, just your whole body just gets all tense and tight and you just would do anything you can to stop something or to make something happen? That's how Leo is feeling right now. But after a while, Leo got hungry. And so he went down for dinner. I'm angry too, his dad said. So after they ate, they danced and stomped and raged together. They shredded on guitar and Leo did a special scream solo. It made both of them a little less mad. Music can help when you have really big emotions sometimes. Like this one, right? Where Leo wanted to scream and so his dad said, let's play really loud music and then we can scream together. Soon, the blue house began to fill up with boxes. Every day, another familiar object was packed away. Have you ever moved out of your house? Not everyone who moves is moving because their house is gonna be knocked down. Sometimes you need a bigger house or a smaller house or a house that is closer to where you go to school or where your parents work 
or uh, maybe you want to move closer to your family, like your grandparents or your cousins. There's lots of reasons that people move. But anytime you move, you got to pack up your stuff if you want to bring it with you, right? When the blue house was empty, it was echoey and drafty like a hollow shell. The walls look so naked, said Leo. Let's paint on them, said his dad. It made both of them a little less sad. Now, if they were moving to a different house and a new family was moving into their house, do you think they could paint on the walls like that? No, that wouldn't be very nice for the people moving in. But no one's moving into their house, right? So they can do what they like. And look, I love the colors of the flowers and the bird and the big pine tree that they painted, just like the one outside their house. So look, they found a new house. What color is this house? Yeah, it's white. The new house felt empty too. It didn't feel like home. I hate it, said Leo. That's okay, said his dad. And look, they're hugging. When you feel angry or sad, does it help to get a hug from your mom or your dad or your grandma or your grandpa? Yeah, it definitely can help, huh? One day, Leo and his dad walked by the hole where the blue house had been. So their house did get knocked down, didn't it? It's not there anymore. It's all gone. When they shut their eyes, they could see it clearly. Hear every floorboards creak and the drip of the faucet's leak. But when they opened them again, their home was gone. Have you ever done that where you close your eyes and you think about something and then it appears like a picture in your brain? Yeah, those are called memories, right? That night, as Leo lay in bed staring at the empty walls of his new room, he had an idea. What if we painted it? Leo said. Good thinking, said his dad. Then together, they mixed the perfect shade of blue. And it made them both feel a little more at home. So what did they paint on the walls of their new home? They painted a picture of their old home. The blue house with the big fir tree and flowers, and their cat, and a butterfly, and the bright sun. And they could paint on these walls because they're their walls, aren't they? That's right. Little by little, familiar objects began to appear in the new house. After school one day, Leo and his dad baked a pie in the kitchen. Can you tell what kind of pie they're baking? Can you see what fruit is on the table? That's right. It's my favorite. Apple pie. Yum. And that night, they unpacked the stereo and danced and stomped and sang until it was time for bed. Leo had been right. The blue house would be theirs forever. And with each passing day, the new house was becoming theirs. The Thanks for listening, friends. It is time for our goodbye song. And friends, this song is sort of a quiet song, but if you want to sway and dance with this song or twirl around or even stomp like Leo and his dad, you are more than welcome to.